Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to the end of the world. I will begin with a quote. A sinister atmosphere shrouds our planet, saturated by the toxic particles of the colonial capitalist regime. The ambient air is suffocating us. This is a quote from Spheres of Insurrection, one of the last texts by Sir Lee that now Sergio Delgado Moya is translating. Uh, and the quote contains for me in a nutshell, the type of thinking and writing that I wanted to present in this series of conversations on the end of the world. It is on the one hand, a diagnostic made possible by our situation in Latin America, that as I said in the presentation of this series of events, I think anticipates much of what the whole world is living or will be living in the coming years. But that little quote and the title of uh, Sueli's uh, book also uh, points at the possibility of imagining a way out or an insurrection against this end of the world. An insurrection that artists, writers, activists in Latin America have been creating in the past years. And Sueli is probably one of the most definitive representatives of that Latin American tendency and insistence. And she has been doing this since at least 1982, when she wrote together with Felix Gattari, what, in, what is known in English as Molecular Revolution in Brazil, a classic book that is available in English, uh, published by Semiotext. This conversation today wants to honor the immense work Sueli has done in the field of psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis, architecticism, philosophy, and anthropology. But it's also an opportunity to discuss how in Latin America, theory and critical thinking can move mass politics, as is clear today in the current state of the feminist tide. This is why I wanted to also have in this conversation Sayak Valencia from Mexico and Cecilia Palmeiro from Argentina, as you know in the description, part of the Nuna Menos Collective. So I want to thank everybody that made possible this conversation today. Of course, first of all, the three speakers that I'm really honored to share space with today. I also want to thank Emily Apter and the Comparative Literature Department that encouraged me to think of this series. And of course, Michael Ernst that has helped me come up with posters, communications that made possible that so many people are now attending this conversation. Uh, we will have brief interventions by each of the speakers, beginning with Sueli Rolnik, then moving to Sayak Valencia and ending with Cecilia Palmeiro. And after these brief interventions, what we will have is a conversation coordinated by graduate students, Silvia Gorelik and Rebecca Smith. If members from the audience have questions, please use the chat to present these questions. Silvia and Rebecca will be paying attention to the chat so that they can somehow select the questions that they seem are more relevant to the conversation. And if this is not the way you want to speak, you can also use the virtual hand that you have in Zoom to raise your hands and then we will try to uh, uh, give you the chance to formulate your question live. So I will end now and I will welcome again Sueli, Sayaka and Cecilia, starting with Sueli. Again, Sueli, thanks a lot for being here. It's a pleasure and an honor. Oh. Thank you very much, Mariano. Thank you very much, uh, Sayak and Cecilia, because it's a big pleasure to have this conversation because it is super necessary for me three, but for all of us, you no? Know? And, uh, and, uh, and I hope that we'll have nice questions, nice questions, no? Of people that are with, uh, with me uh, here, because uh, with us here, because, uh, we are living in a very, very sinister and also exciting times. I say exciting because we are convoked to, to confront that and to, and to decipher what's going on and to construct you know, ways to get out of that, you know, to construct another kind of world. Uh, and I beg, uh, I, I, excuse me, uh, I excuse my English. In fact, the good thing would be that you people that speak English uh, <laughs> listen us in Spanish because it's our common language. But we are yet in a world where English is the 
paradigm. No? So, okay, so my English is very bad, but I'm not ashamed and I, I, I have no fear, so I will try to do my best, okay? Bom, uh, and thank you also uh, the people that make that this meeting uh, possible and all your program, no? Uh, Maria Nor, your project, it's a very nice project. Well, I think that I, I like to, to begin listen to as I listen listen to you. Uh, I, I want it gives me the desire to 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 um, to begin on what you said about Latin America, no? Because I think that we are living a very very special moment in our continent. Uh, we will call it Latin. And America, because this is the name yet, but it's not forever this name. No? <laughs> and uh, it's very interesting what's going on in Latin America uh, uh, related to what is going on globally. No? And in this moment, so difficult and sinister and dangerous moment we are living globally, when uh, capitalism uh, uh, arrive to his to the answers essence of his principle. No, and I talk about that. Um, um, in the most radical, because uh, if we agree that the the principle or, or the goal uh, of capitalism is. To, uh, if you if you agree with the, the the idea that Marx began has first this intuition in 19th century, you no, know, when he he, he invented this concept of uh, plus value, mais valia, como se dice plus valia, surplus value, surplus value. It's something so obvious but so invisible at the same time. And he said, oh, there is no magic about accumulating capital. It's not because I'm smart. <laughs> it's, there is no magic. It's very simple. It's very simple how we accumulate capital. He said, we accumulate capital because we accumulate the difference between what I pay to the worker to produce something that I will send in the market and the difference between the salary I pay to him and the price of this product, for instance, if, if his salary is $10, no? And the product is to $200, it's very simple, very simple. <laughs> $190 are in my pocket and they are, and they accumulate and accumulate. Of course, I pay also the, the, the factory, the machine, et cetera, but $150. <laughs> they accumulate in my pocket. So, so what he said, oh, so the accumulation of capital has to do with the pimping. He, he, Marx was very well educated, it's not like, like me. So he, he would not say pimp, okay? But I come from, from an, a, a very poor neighbors of Sao Paulo in Latin America. So I use the common language, no? So, <laughs> so, uh, he said, ah, so there is not, it's not a miracle, incredible. <laughs> is the, is, is, uh, capital, the accumulation of capital has to do with the painting of the life force of the worker, but he only guessed, it's incredible already, no? it's fantastic, but he, only intu his intuition was on the, 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 the life force or the drive, you know, <laughs> of the worker, uh, the life as in his manifest in its manifestation uh, as work, okay, work, and especially industrial work because it was the times of industrial capitalism. Okay, what we could develop since there, since long time, is to understand that is not only life under his manifestation as work. No? It's the like, this life uh, movement no? is drive in all its manifestations. 
not only as work. And also more, more than that, it's not the, only the human body life, but all the biosphere, the life of all the components of the biosphere, not only human, no? Uh, uh, waters, mountains, earth, animals, plants, etc., etc., etc. So the basis of capitalism is the pimping of life force that is deviated from its what I call ethical destiny. What could be if if we? I think one uh, parenthesis, como se dice parenthesis. Bracket. 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 One bracket, no? Um, I think that the, the most interesting thing that ecology brought to us, the ecological movement, no? Is not only his visible, visible face, which is very important, no? To, 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 to combat, no? This abuse, this abuse of life in all, all the elements of nature, no? But I think that in the invisible, from what I will call micro-political, and I will uh, describe what I understand by micro-politics, no? From a micro-political point of view, what is what I think that ecological movement brought to us is to, is to discover the most obvious thing that we are cut from this knowing, which is, we are part of what we call the nature, no? Uh, we are part of the ecosystem. And this open a whole possibility that is not necessarily, that has been not necessarily worked by ecologist people movement, which is what is, how I can, how I can accept this face of my subjectivity as a living being, component as 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 uh, the palm trees or as the como é que fala barata cucarachas cockroaches as cockroaches as as trees as, as all kind of thing. Uh, how can I access my experience, objective experience? of a living being component of this e e ecosystem. And this is very, very important. Why? Because, and now I will begin to, to speak about the colonial racializing capitalistic unconscious regime. It is a very important, this open is very important. Why? Because, the, the um, uh, how I say it in English, one second. One second, I'm trying, I'm, okay. Because the gear, the gears of the machinery of this regime of unconscious, if we understand, and we, you understand better in a few minutes, but if we understand the unconscious as the factory of worlds, the factory of oneself and of the world, no, it's the unconscious is the is the is the element of our of our subjective experience, where we are part, we are compon a component of eco a, a, an ecosystem, no. And what happens in these ecosystems in our body? The effects of this those uh, the the ecosystem in our body. This is the the realm of unconscious, no? Because it's from the answer to those effects to what is happening in the in the ecosystem. The answer to to moments that where life loses its ba its balance in the ecosystem. Okay, I felt it in my body. No, and this is real. It's not a metaphor. It's not uh, esoteric stuff. It's not all some energies or something like that. No, I feel concrete materiality in my body. My body 
is consisted by those effects, no? This produces a kind of state of my body, which has no name, no words, no gestures, etc. No? But this is the way, the way to I, I can situate myself of what's going on with those effects of the ecosystem in my body. And when, when the ecosystem loses its balance and life is interrupted in, its, uh, uh, in the rhythm of its movement, no? all the elements of nature, you can see the, you can see the trees and, and the wind, etc. They, 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 they change, they, they, they have a process of changing their form in order to give back to life its rhythm. Because what life wants, it's very simple. And Spinoza, another incredible person, fantastic person, he said, what life wants is to persevere, is to go on. And life to go on must, each time that it loses its balance, its life is uh, in its, its essence, is a potency, potency as we use this in Latin language, no? A strength, a potency, a potency of transfiguration, because there is no life that is not in a kind of body which is shape, its form, no, its form of expression. And when life loses its balance, what it unleashes is a movement of transfigurating those forms or transfigurating those modes of expression of those bodies and to invent something else in order to breathe again, no? Okay. So um, I'm, 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 I'm talking about a dimension of our subjectivity, which I think that those who are listening to me, they, they understand in their body what I am listening, but it's a kind of strange thing. And why it's a kind of strange thing that if, if you will try to repeat, it's a little bit difficult to find the word. Because in the unconscious regime, no? Uh, colonial, racializing, um, capitalist, unconscious regime, subjectivity, the subject is cut it. Cut it of uh, what is obstructed is its access to those effects of the ecosystem, ecosystem which not only environmental, it's also a social and mental ecosystem, no? We are without any access to this phase of our subjectivity, which I call transpersonal. In my, in my book, I call it out of subject, but I don't want to, and I will not take time now to, to explain why I changed, but I will just say why I choose the name transpersonal, because, is the face of the subject face, our subjectivity experience dimension, where I am the effects of the social, uh, environmental, mental ecosystem in my body that compose my body and compose each time differently. So it's not person, it's transpersonal because there is, a, there is a transversality of all the components of the ecosystems that composing my body, okay? There is another, there is another phase of our subjectivity or, or another phase of the subject, which is very much more easy for us to understand immediately, which is what I call the personal phase, no? which is the way I must charge my computer. One second. <coughs> yes, I forgot. Yeah, yes. So this other phase, which I call the personal phase of the subject, is the phase where we deal not in the transpersonal phase, we deal with the effects of the forces 
that compose, compose the, the ecosystem each moment and their relations, the ethics of those forces in my body, life forces. But in this other phase, I'm, I'm not dealing with this, those forces and not with the effects of those forces. I'm dealing with the forms, the mode of expressions, the current mode of expression. And this, this includes all the, um, all the, all the calls, the, way, the, uh, the social cartography, the place which uh, one occupy in this cartography, uh, our language, our cultural rituals, etc., etc. And this is a very important phase of our subjectivity because uh, to deal with the forms, because this, uh, this allows us to situate, uh, to live, to, uh, uh, this allows our social existence, okay? So I said that in my transpersonal phase, I situate myself to the fact of the forces that compose an ecosystem in my body, okay? But in this personal phase, this is much, much more easier, easy for us uh, white da -da 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 people, you know, <laughs> white uh, anthropophile egos, <laughs> logocentric people. Is that wh how I, I decipher those forms? I image uh, true perception, not to reverberation of those forces in my body, but true perception. And perception, it's not verging because the perception is, is already totally uh, uh, mar marcada. Mark, mark. Uh, by a kind of repertoire, repertoire of language, of, uh, of representations. So when I see or I listen or I touch thing, thank, something through my perception, immediately I associate with some of the representations I have in my mind, and I project those representations to what I'm seeing or listening or touching, and then it makes sense for me. And I can situate myself uh, in face of that, and I can, I can situate that, and I, we can communicate, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is very important in social existence but it's totally different with a different logic, different temporality of this other phase. To go to our, to our end, because I think that I'm, my 15 minutes are finished. The, the problem, so when, what happened? When something, when life is out of balance in the ecosystem, we can say, for instance, in the social ecosystem, for instance, Bolsonaro, in the ecosystem. In my transpersonal phase, I, I can I can get, I can I can I, I can feel that it produce that, that is produce a very desic, a, a huge disequilibrium in life. So I can feel it. Okay. So th those effects of Bolsonaro in my body. And I could say also the climate catastrophe, but let's take this political social example. No, those effects is like the, if there are como que fala secundar, 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 secundar quando secundar. uma mulher é secundada gives birth to to give ah. birth. É, 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 é before giving birth. I yeah. can say that we are just those reverberations, those effects in our bodies is is as it we would be uh, fecundated by the, uh, and- Fertilized, uh, you can say uh, as well. Fertilized. fertilized. So, and this Bolsonaro, not as, not as a form, but the, the, the kind of, of uh, uh, life force that it, it introduced in the environment, no? Uh, fertilize me, produce the, this state in my body, which, which we can call the real. This is the real, not reality. No? And it is like an embryo of something that has no world, world that has no justice. And what happens is that when this embryo is dead, for instance, now the embryo that inhabits all, 
all our bodies with uh, what is happening in the world, no? <clears throat> the presence of this embryo, it, it can't be translated by the repertoire of representations I have. He is, he, there is a, a, a climate of destabilization of life, of disequilibrium of life. I have this embryo already in my body. And this embryo is like a, a life alarm, which is saying we can't go on with this form, this mode of existence, those forms. I'm suffocating, I can breathe, I can breathe, no? And this alarm in our body, in our subjectivity, convokes us to act in order to recover the balance. And what acts in, in our subjectivity, what acts is desire. So desire is convoked to act because this repertoire, when in my personal face, I can situate myself, doesn't work anymore. And there is something as an embryo of future or embryo of world, world that is already there and needs to find the way to burn. To, fight, to, to become sensible in a body, in a mode of expression, a new mode of expression, a new mode of existence, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this tension between those two uh, experience, they are indissociable, those two experience, convoke this uh, desire to answer and to, to act in order to, in principle, to create something where life would recover uh, it's rhythm, the rhythm is its movement, no? But, and now I finish with that, the, the answers of desire are, are viable, va variable. There are many, many possibilities of answer. And this is the micropolitical sphere. The micropolitical sphere is the sphere of the combat between different kind of answers to the demand of, to what life is demanding each time that it, it is suffocating in the present forms of living, of existing, no? And okay, what, uh, 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 each system, for instance, the, the capitalistic system, I use this system now, the capitalistic system, the capitalist system or the feudal system or the uh, Guarani uh, system. They are a way of living, okay, but always to each system corresponds, corresponds a kind of macro politics dominating the fabrication of reality, the fabrication of words, not worlds. Because the, the answer of desire is not neutral depending on the answer is a kind of world which will be produced, okay? The unconscious is this factory of world, but the CEO of this factory, now what runs the, this factory, it's, its goal, et cetera, et cetera, and it's, its machinery and what it wants to produce, its product, they are totally different from one culture to the other. What, what uh, uh, is uh, the char characterize <clears throat> the regime of unconscious or the factory of worlds in our uh, culture, in our uh, Western modern culture or in our colonial racializing capitalist culture is that the, the answer of desire that dominate is a reactive answer. I will just define that and I finish, no? The active answer of desire is that desire put it in movement and begin to search the way to create, it's a process of creation, to create something where what is embryonic or virtual in my body will find its mode of expression in another uh, form of body, okay a form of existence. It can be a work of art. It can be another kind of sexuality, etc. Okay, in life, recover is written. Okay, this is the ethical destiny of life. It's recover the rhythm when the rhythm is interrupted because 
the destiny of life is to persevere, to go on, okay? This is the active answer, but what is the reactive answer? <coughs> the reactive answer, I will take the example, exactly our regime, because in our unconscious regime, what dominates, uh, what is prevalent, prevalent is this kind, what I will uh, describe now, this reactive answer. No, the reactive answer is, my subjective experience is reduced to the personal face. I'm not saying that we are narcissistic. I'm not saying that we are bad people. <laughs> I'm just saying that we are reduced to this experience, no? And we are, we have totally obstructed our access to our experience of living being and to the effects of the ecosystem, social, mental, and and environmental in my body. And I totally cut it from this state that is a real state that is there in my body. And it's like an embryo future, embryo world. I'm totally cut. So the only thing I feel is that I'm totally destabilized because what I have as repertoire of representations, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, does it work? My moral system, does it work? My values, no? So I feel totally destabilized. As I can't, I have no access to this knowing on my living being experience, no? And desire, we must act in order to recover equilibrium. Desire will act just through consuming uh, things, for instance, not, consu not only cons consuming, but I must go quickly and then uh, after we can develop that. It, it will, the desire will search for recomposing what is already there in a way that it, I, the ego, my personal face, the personal face of, uh, of the subject, will feel that he recover his stability and he is recognized again. So, it is, he's, he's, he feels recognize, recognize himself and he feels that he, he'll be socially recognized because destabilization make, and when I, I am reduced to ego, make me fear that I can be excluded, that nobody will love me, that I'm, 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 I'm becoming crazy, that I, I, it's a, it's, I'm a loser, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, desire will act in order to give me the illusion that I recover a nice image. I can, for instance, to do that, to recover a kind of contour of my speech, I can imitate Deleuze or Marx or, you know, or the priest of evangelical church or self-help literature, the same. I you imitate that in order to des design a contour and feel that oh everything came back to the space. And the 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 consequence of that reactive answer is that the process of creation that should be unleashed or the germination of this embryo that should be there in order to get to give birth to the world that is embryonic, it's interrupted. It's interrupted. Okay. What is the 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 um, the goal? The goal of capitalism, where I, as I say, is to pimp life force. With those images that I brought now, that I brought now. As I don't, I don't have this access, and, then this, and when desire will act, life force, or life drive, or drive, instead of be orientated to this its ethical destiny, which will will uh, correspond to a transfiguration of forms of life, you no, know, it will be deviated to as a few few of accumulation of capital, not only economic capital, but, but only political, but also political capital and narcissistic 
Nazis in Turkey. So this is the, the principle <coughs> of the factory of worlds under the colonial racial, racializing capitalistic unconscious regime. And when I said that always to all, reg to all regime corresponds an a kind of unconscious regime is because it's this unconscious regime will give the pos who, who, who produce, uh, who, who give to the regime its existential consistency. Because without a subjectivity that, that function like that, but I just described very, very briefly, this, this system, economical system, for instance, can't exist because it must be embodied. In, in subjectivity ways of existing in kind of relations, et etc. The unconscious regime is what runs the production of the share, the share, the flesh of the existential flesh of a, of a, of a, a regime, you know? Uh, without it, if, if there was no there, it's impossible to, <laughs> to, to so it's it's uh, in the Marxism we, we talk a, a lot of on reproduction, but in, in a complicated way, this is where this way of being, this kind of world, is productive and reproductive. You know? So I I stay here. Thanks, Oli. Thanks a lot. <coughs> and we move now to Sayag, and I think Sayag wanted to share her screen. Yes. Oh, well, first of all, thank you very much to all of you for being here. And, and I want to uh, just, uh, I, will, uh, I would like to begin by thanking uh, Mariano Lopez Aone and the Comparative Literature in Spanish and Portuguese Department, but also uh, to the students and, uh, and everyone who make it possible to, this, to be uh, possible this conversation. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm so, so really pleasure and uh, really honored to be with uh, such amazing scholars as Asueli Rolnik and Cecilia Palmeiro. I, I love her, their, their works and then it's a really impressionable and really important the, the things that they are doing. And oh uh, well, today I, I will uh, speak about the live stream regime and I will explain the concept of live stream uh, regime as a way to reflect on the new political dimension of the governance of emotions related with the colonial capitalistic unconscious. Uh, this is carried out via the use of digital audiovisual elements in order to stoke the fascination for violence and authoritarianism by means of the design of image and cultural material like that that are highly cosmetic. This kind of images are used by the stream dig digital right or the art right as it now is in the in the United States, but other other extreme rights in in other parts of the continent, and um, uh, have two uh, two functions. One is cosmetize fascism and make it attractive again, and two trivialize and justify the violence inflict and on communities that are dis in the disadvantage and marginalized due to issues of gender, race, class, sexual diversity, disability, or immigration status. As I know that um, it's a kind of really, really, um, well, English is not my native language, as you know. I will uh, share my screen with you and uh, just a second, please, uh, because I will read it. Uh, in order to just uh, keep on time, my, my participation, and then, well, let's let's uh, let's do it and share my screen, and then uh, we can just uh, have a conversation with with all of you about the, this uh, kind of perspective that I'm I'm trying to put in a dialogue with you. Uh, well, let me just one second. Okay, let me just put my talk. Okay. Well, uh, 
the West Pandas, how can it be given the atrocities that took place in Second War, World War that fascism is on the rise again? Why are the politics of hate and cynicism increasingly becoming positive values that rack up life, likes in social media and how have they come to be so characteristic of the leaders of the new world order? Uh, has Sueli mentioned Bolsonaro, uh, the Donald Trump, but also uh, the president of Mexico. Um, uh, how we reached this point, it has been a long journey passing by technological landmarks like photography, cinema, television, the internet and, mob and mobile telephones, all of which have accompany the modern narratives of progress. But there are two elements in particular which have paved the way for the return of fanatism. One, the erasure of memory, and two, the cosmetization of violence. Both elements are play a crucial role in the rise of the new authoritarianism, despite the fact that it is a pre present in the media and in a virtual social, uh, virtual social network as a something which appears suddenly with no previous explanation or context. It is present as an exceptional exception to the democratic rule. However, those who are of us who has been born in, grow up in, and have inhabited formerly colonial spaces and or spaces near borders, or those of us who are racialized heritage, are sexual dissenters, or who are gender not conforming, or are so-called illegal immigrants, or indeed any combination of these variables with others, we know that this rise of the fundamentalism is not an exception to the democratic rule, but rather the mode of production of the exceptional, which has kept the cogs of the largest economies turning from colonial times right up to today. The methods are different and the technologies have been updated, but three elements have remained essential in the return of conservative colonial thinking. One, the popularization of white supremacy. Two, indiscriminate celebration of violent masculinity. And three, the glorification of the heterosexual nation. Uh, as you know, the heterosexual nation is a, a concept of Ochi Curiel, and I put the reference there. All of these high destructive colonial imaginaries and are in clear opposition to the feminist, anti racist, sex dissident, decolonial, and migrant movements. Uh, with this in man, mind, what is the link between the rise of fascism 2.0 and the use of certain elements of digital folklore, as well as the spread of certain images for dis dissemination? I propose a concept of live stream regime to outline this link and theoretically bridge the gap between the biopolitical regime as a Foucault proposed in which the central role of the government was the administration of life in its processes, Foucault 2079, I'm sorry, 1979, and the digital psychopolitical regime, uh, Han 2040, in which subjectivity is exploited and emotions are commoditized. Uh, the aim is to try to understand the movement, the movement away from forms of disciplinary governance over what is life towards the forms of governance over the psyche and subjectivity by means on live stream. What is the live stream regime? Uh, the live stream regime is a conceptualization with which I seek to indicate the change in sensibility that produce a cognitive, cognitive mutation as a Franco Berardi wrote in 2017, both in terms of content and perceptual devices. It has at least three characteristics. One, the visual elimination of the public pre private uh, division to the reification of time as something without duration, pure adrenaline, instantaneity and amnesia entry, the extreme cosmetization of violent images and their critical depolitization. This rolling over our emotions, reprograms or frames of perception, perception in order to keep us hyper stimulated and locking in eternal present with no long-term memory. It is a kind of embodiment of the society of the spectacle 
has the board announced it in the 60s, we use uh, simulation as a uh, uh, proposed in the 90s. But this version goes even further because it is a digital political order and it's linked with the production of algorithms and information that can be commoditized in very different ways. Uh, well, for example, uh, with the platform capitalism or uh, there is the selling of personal information for companies uh, understood as a data colonialism uh, or as well the monetization of emotions uh, among other examples. However, the most important factor for this form of administration is that, and I quote Agriciotti, the gathering data, data also aids in the strategic aim of ensuring the continued propagation of their system itself. As, a as such, the reality of the live stream regime merged the internet with the alternate, a sensorial rupture in the offline online divide, which result in, in the spectralization of the world. In turn, this affect, this affect the way in which the, we empathize empathize or not with certain violent ep events and how we presume as today presumers and accept certain imaginaries. An example of this are the image, image, images of people killed in terrorist attacks, images in which the victims are inhabit, inhabits of the third world or, and, and or racialized. The images, Images don't rouse the same uh, degree of empathy or sorrow of those which features uh, white people from the economic, uh, economic superpowers. Though this regime doesn't, does indeed create wealthy industries and reinvent the devices of and platforms forms for broadcasting. It is also spread a neoliberal common sense, which is a concept of Emil, uh, Ingar Emil Heinz, a theorician, Mexican theorician, uh, in a, a neoliberal common sense, which is combined with conservative, conservative agendas and spectralize the atrocious condition of certain acts of violence committed against minority population. Or a, an example of this could be the indifference shown by Donald Trump when questioned about the migrant children being held in detention center in Mexico, in, in Mexico US border. Uh, and this allow for, allows for the dissemination and popularization of conservative discourse by mean, means of highly cosmetic images as a, such as racist, sexist, and supremacist memes. These comical memes ima images when mixed into folklore, di uh, digital folklore, do, their, do the round of virtual social networks indiscriminately. For example, right? Uh, right alongside other images, which may in fact be critical or defensive in nature. In this sense, the live stream regime creates contradictory montages where political extremes appear side by side using aesthetic logics that have been uh, taken out of context. And in the, in this, crea this creates confusion in the specters uh, because it presents a system of equivalences where everything is equally valid. This trivialization of the meaning of upsetting images uh, reconfigures the visual, visual regime. It challenged the true value of facts and it erased the historical memory of certain people, particularly those who who, who been uh, to minority uh, groups, for example, who are indigenous, racialized, poor, feminist, sexually descended, uh, dis disabled migrants. It follows the the live stream regime uh, governance is therefore based on the creation and replacement of reality in order to alter perception and to nudge our sensibility towards the more, the more restrictive frameworks of the offline world. Uh, this demand mental architecture is that is comfortable, contradictory, and depolitized. For example, this uh, that is the right to be captured and seduced by simplistic ideas that appeal to the emotional emotions and individual desires rather than putting, uh, pushing for social justice and collectively. In other words, it reform, reinforced the power of the capitalist colonial unconscious that Rolnick explained to us in his extraordinary book, Spheres of Insurrection. Um, well, uh, 
give me a, a second. Up to this point, it seems that there is all bad news. <laughs> How, however, there are feminist counteroffensives uh, that use the technological device and grammars of art, music, and popular culture to create emotional and cultural counteroffenses. I will put a video that exemplifies this op opposition to the live stream regime in almost mimetic terms of its aesthetics. And uh, I have to, uh, well, I will try to share from here, but I think it's not possible. Well, I, I will put a, this uh, Nati Peluso video, uh, Visa Rap Music Session uh, 36. Uh, it was recorded in uh, November 27 and 2020. And I will change, uh, I, I will stop to sharing my, my, and then I will put it. And uh, okay, and I, I, I do want to see you uh, like dancing. <laughs> but maybe I can see it because uh, um, this exercise that to put this uh, video, it's uh, for everything to see it, to read it, the, the subtitles, to dance or whatever you want. But then uh, we go back to come so to make some final comments. So uh, ready. Te tienes que, tienes que sacar, no puede estar muda. Esta es mi método, gordo, agárrate. Mira mi truco, bicarfo, no te maté, cocino tu co... Ah, perdón, Mariano, no se escuchó, ¿verdad? El principio no. Ok, lo voy a regresar porque tenemos un, po un par de minutos todavía. Sí. Va, ah, listo. No te mudezcas. Ok. Qué buenas vistas tenés cuando me pones a cuatro patas. Si se entera de esto, mi papá te mata. No te doy la gracia para que me digas ingrata. Mira más suave que ese fragilita en dulce, una mina delicata. Este es mi método, gordo, agárrate. Mira mi truco, bicarfo, no te mate. Cocino tu co, tu quito mate. Con mi, mm, yo genero debate. Manda mensaje, dice que dice, pero después no hace ni. Mm. Cuando me escribe, suena valiente, pero de frente no dice ni. Mm. Manda mensaje, dice que dice, pero después no hace ni. Mm. Perra, sorprendente, curvilini, ay, elocuente, magníficamente colosal, extravagante y animal. La que sabe, se aprovecha, a tu cucu yo le doy mecha, que te guste, es normal, me buscaste lo vi en tu historial. No puedo evitar ser maravillosa, dame la golosina que te golosa, soy un desayuno continental, tienen que escucharme con delante. Nene, tu novia se puso pegajosa. Venime de frente y arreglamos la cosa. Hago un delivery de comunal. Ladro que ladro, no tengo bozal. Manda mensaje, dice que dice, pero después no hace ni. Cuando me escribe, suena valiente. Ver a esos gallitos matando a una cucaracha. Con dos caramelitos, nene se me empacha. Para decir la verdad, no necesito estar borracha. Tu vestida barata, no me baja la bombacha. Esta muchacha es clara y concisa. Tengo de tu pizza, relatiza. Le saqué la visera al pizza. Vendo mi alma por una pizza. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nasty girl, fantastic. Este culo natural o no plastic. Lo que toco lo hago bombastic. Todo eso gila a mí me la mastic. I'm a nasty girl, fantastic. Este culo natural o no plastic. Lo que toco lo hago bombastic. Todo eso gila a mí me la mastic. Uh, 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 uh,
Okay. Uh, tengo alguna, I have uh, some uh, notes about it, but I don't know. We, we have like three minutes and I have many things to say about Nati Peluso, but I think it's very, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> let me. Mira, nene, óyeme. Let me. Don't play with my ass, because if you play with my ass. Sick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let me, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, okay, Lo, voy a hablar los, uh, I will speak the through two more minutes and then explain why I put Nati Peluso. And I bring this example because despite it being a product uh, of the entertainment and music industry, her and her staging, her voice, her vocal register changes, her sexuality, explicit lyrics, and her defense of body diversity, it, it interrupts the uh, linearity of the language, sing, uh, sings which multiple accents from the auditory point of view, uh, a linguistic and acoustic pigeon that connects sensibility with other parts of intelligibility. And she produced uh, a connection at the affective level through the sound in terms of language. Uh, she, she embodies the Latin America bubble who thinks and speaks and feels with an accent produced in a migrant context. Migrant context. Above, above all, she put the question of desire to work for the desiring machine through her pro-sex feminist sexuality and also through the rescue of the pleasure of food and everyday and everyday life in her songs. And for other, in other hand, uh, on a technical and collaborative level, his production is also from the other world. And I finish my by saying that a revolution will be bodily sensitive and danceable. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sayak. Uh, so we move now to Cecilia. This will be the last presentation. Then we open the room for, for comments and questions. And I'm seeing that there are, there are a couple of them already in the chat. Cecilia, so I will share the screen. Uh, oh, I, I can start talking and then you share. OK, start talking and, and you tell me and, when and I And then when, when we, yeah, when we get to the point where First of all, thank you so much, Mariano, for, for this opportunity of uh, sharing a panel with um, the goddesses of uh, Latin American theory, Sueli and, and Sayak, which I really admire and, and whose work has inspired me so much. And not only me, but all our generation and all the women who are struggling to, uh, to theorize and to think differently out, outside the box of uh, machista white um, academia. So um, departing um, from Soelis theorization of the spheres of insurrection, especially the connection between macro, uh, macro politics and micro politics, um, my presentation will share a personal political ethic aesthetic experiment we are um, making together with uh, my dearest friend and comrade, Fernanda Laguna, artist, writer, activist, and everything, uh, you name it. In the context of uh, our experience in the Niuna Menos Collective and Movement. So the, the, con the context of this, um, of this work um, is, uh, well, the five and six, six now years of feminist tide, right? Uh, that is defined particularly from my perspective, from our perspective, as a creation of a collective historical and political subjects that we call the feminist tide, that is designing new cartographies that we call uh, the feminist international from below and from the south, through the organization of transnational cross-border actions, such as the international feminist strike that uh, this year is uh, the fourth, it was the fourth edition, 
which is uh, we define as the real general strike uh, as it um, as it includes all forms of labor uh, recognized and unrecognized, and also, but also an act of disobedience and collaborative creation of something really new. So the, uh, our project uh, is called High, and now you can share, High on the Tide, Diary of a Feminist Revolution. And maybe if you, when, when you see the image, or oh, don't start by the end. So <laughs> <laughs> don't spoil <laughs> and also put full screen because everybody is uh, looking at uh, all our speakers say next <laughs> um, well we do have uh, the confidence to say these things between Marianne and me I, I, I hope you don't find this disrespectful uh, <laughs> but uh, in Spanish uh, the project is called Mareadas en la Marea, Diario Intimo de una Revolución Feminista. And also, as you can see in the posters, we, we don't want to, um, to make with this uh, an official history or like we are the, uh, the, the owners of the revolution, the queens of the revolution or anything like that, but rather we want to say that we are mareadas, we are dizzy, we are high because this is, uh, this is like a drug, but a good one. Uh, the one that doesn't involve uh, human suffering or animal suffering or, or any kind of violence. So as, as part of this, um, also we want to stress the fact that we, uh, we are trying just to make sense of what we are going through. Uh, it doesn't mean, I mean, there are so many different uh, stories of this process that we also want to uh, encourage uh, others to do uh, their own memories and their own and, and share, of course, uh, their own views on what is going on. But we do uh, think we need to make sense because everything is going so uh, at a such high speed and uh, with such intensity that many times we just feel dizzy and we, we cannot see what's really what we're doing. So as part of um, this revolutionary process that is macro-political, but also micro-political. We are experiencing a process of uh, subjective mutation. And what I'd like to stress here is the most, uh, not, not only the, the most obvious thing that we're women now, we are um, denouncing, we are uh, protesting, we, uh, we claim uh, protagonism, we are no longer uh, being silenced, etc. but uh, especially a more subtle process that is the uh, that this revolution has unleashed an unprecedented potency of creation at a massive level, and this is uh, something I have thought of uh, as a feminist uh, avant-garde. Not in the sense that there is uh, a group or whatever um, human. Uh, uh, front line of this revolution, but rather that the creative uh, power, the power of creation, the potency of creation has uh, been um, emancipated from the, from the artistic field and, has, and, and is um, coming now from below. It comes from everywhere. E everybody is producing this amazing, brilliant ideas, concepts, images, um, practices uh, that goes from not only um, what we would call, but uh, no longer works of art, I would rather call them uh, um, aesthetic art, political aesthetic artifacts, because they are no longer works of art as uh, we define a work of art, but rather um, the creation of um, something, uh, modes of living new that involves different sexualities, different uh, alimentation, uh, different um, relations, different, uh, well, a, a relation with one's own body particularly, which is very important, new modes of self-care, of uh, experimenting with uh, natural medicine. And I'm thinking of uh, the group Mama Cultiva, for instance, who are, um, fostering uh, self-growth of uh, marijuana for medicinal, but also recreational use. Uh, and they don't uh, make a difference between them, for instance. And, and I'm, I mean, uh, the examples are so many, I could not um, mention them all, but 
just to say that this potency of creation is transforming aesthetically, ethically, and socially uh, our lives. So in this, uh, in this sense is that we, in Una Menos, we always say that we, we put into practice the world we want to live in by, for instance, a practice of the strike, by disobeying, but not, not going to work, but, say, but by saying uh, enough is enough, etc., uh, etc., et in such uh, original ways that we have never thought of before. Even we could have never imagined before uh, the, a feminist strike, right? And, until, until we put it together, until we did it. So um, in order to create those uh, micro, macro, sorry, organizations and goals and uh, political groups and actions, that are radically new, we had to also surrender ourselves to a process of becoming and to a subjective mutation that we don't know where it's going. And also to develop new skills and to dare to make things we have never dreamt before, right? To unleash these potencies, these germs of future in our bodies too, from, I don't know, cutting, no, 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 cutting the streets from, or picketing to, I don't know, giving interviews in mainstream media to doing security on the stages of our rallies. And Mariano, you have been with me in this situation that we had to become bouncers at some point. Uh, and, and it's a constant process of becoming things that we are doing for the first time. And this is very, uh, an expansion of, uh, subjectivity uh, and it's a, an amazing process of learning and, 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 and transforming ourselves. So uh, my point is while we organize macro-politically, something happens micro-politically, right? Our bodies are affected, affected as uh, we say that the earth trembles, but also what is really tremble is subjectivity. Although this micropolitical response to the turbulence we are living uh, is not always active, it can be reactive too. For instance, the fixation of uh, subjective positions within the script of the patriarchal scene of violence and abuse and, and victimization, as Sueli has pointed out in many of her um, conferences and texts, and abuse that is also part, a sort of pimping of the vital forces, right? And um, the image, uh, this image is very useful. Uh, Asweli has coined it to describe the extractivist, extractivist practices of bodies territories. Even the concept of body territory coming from uh, Guatemalan uh, communitarian uh, indigenous feminism is very useful to, to think um, about the transpersonal that Sueli was mentioning. So it's interesting that there are many different sources talking about similar things and they're connected. Um, basically uh, to reach out of the uh, subjectivity that is defined by um, individuality, by the masculine abstraction of individuality as uh, Veronica Gago has very um, cleverly uh, explained in her book, um, Vero is present, hi Vero, and Vero is responsible of this um, coming together of uh, Sayak, Sueli, Mariano, and myself. So thank you, Vero. Um, and I would like uh, maybe for you to talk a little bit later. Um, so, uh, no, no, go on with the friendship. A, a reactive response um, of this fixation in the victim's position, that it, it, this worries me a lot. Uh, that involves a, a lot of jouissance and demands punitive response, responses, reinforcing the me disciplining mechanisms of uh, a society of control, right? And as Sueli also points, victimization is a reactive potency of submission to the regime of the capitalistic, racializing, um, colonial unconscious. And I might add patriarchal to this, uh, to this concept. Um, Another, for instance, re reactionary formation is what we call fuego amigo. I don't know uh, how it translates to English. Uh, when your friends attack you, um, that hides a deeply uh, held uh, and rooted misogyny 
and competition between women, for instance, right? So in, in context of this extreme destabilization and, and clashes of forces, the question is how do we interrupt these reactive micropolitical responses and how, how do we protect and foster an active uh, micropolitical response, right? By which rituals or performances we can dodge the effects of neoliberalism in subjectivity even within a, 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 such an extended macro-political and micro-political movement as the feminist tide. Um, also, uh, so we, in order to uh, become aware of those risks and, and actively orient desire to its ethic, ethical destiny in the formation of new worlds and to poly, pollinize bodies with the germs, we started this project. This project that is, uh, based on uh, friendship between uh, women and feminized bodies. And, and I, I, I chose this image um, for Sayak uh, do you, because we want to honor the Mexican uh, glitter protest uh, a couple of years ago. Well, it was very recent actually uh, that we are, uh, me cuidan mis amigas, no la policía. So we, we want to center um, the politics of affections between uh, women as uh, not, not necessarily in lesbian relations, but be between girlfriends, right? To put in the center to uh, friendship and uh, to, to displace uh, the centrality of couples oppression and, and, and the way in which couples oppression actually produces, um, produces home confinement, uh, uh, unrecognized and unpaid labor, um, all the violences within the home, and lastly, femicide, which is uh, the, the main theme of our movement. Um, so our, our project, High on the Tide, is, has many layers. First of all, it's an effective queer archive of the past of the six years of the feminist revolution, past and present. So also it's an archive of the present. And because of its um, weird nature, we call it a queer archive, uh, because we don't follow a methodology of traditional archiving. We think uh, the methodology is uh, the answer here. Um, what we want also to, uh, to uh, show of this archive is that it, it's a mutant exhibit. It, it's an exhibit that mutates every time uh, it is displayed, and it has so far had five occurrences, and it's now on display uh, at uh, the ICA, the Institute of Contemporary Art at Virginia Commonwealth University and at the Museo de la Lengua, the Libro de la Lengua in Argentina. And in, in all these uh, exhibits, we try to um, socialize the tools uh, and the skills for creation, agitation, political translation between languages, context, situation, and macro and micro politics. What we want to, to show here is the collective cooperation, the in anonymity, uh, where we don't, um, we deprivatized uh, creation. And uh, with this, we try to rehearse the production of the commons, of the commons of images, of uh, tools, of ideas, of concepts. Um, and this is probably the, the beauty of the feminist type that everything, uh, belongs to everyone and everybody can uh, use uh, whatever production other group has um, socialized, uh, etc. And in this transterritoriality of art and politics is where I, uh, we read with Fernanda uh, the potency of um, creation of something new, also as the reappropriation of uh, the desire for social transformation. Also, this project is now getting to another level, which is a book through which we try to uh, found a new literature. After 20 years of uh, the literature of the I, of the self, we are trying to create uh, a literature of nosotras, of us, as uh, using an honorific feminine, um, not as opposed to, to them. This us means, uh, as an inclusive us, in the, in the sense that we have uh, conceptualized through the strikes, when we say we are all workers, trabajadoras somos todas, and we can relate to other women and feminized bodies in their capacity of workers. And this is what uh, fosters also solidarity, trying to 
uh, undo the misogynistic uh, relations women used to have between us. Also by the affirmation of friendship as a revolutionary um, relation uh, to politicize friendship and uh, to deconstruct um, the tyranny of family values and blood kinship, right? That which leads to all the horrors. But I think I am already late. Of course, I prepared a million things I will not be able to share now, but maybe in the conversation. So, well, I hope um, Sueli uh, also is uh, uh, happy with uh, the way in which he has inspired us so much. And um, just to show a little, uh, this was the passage from a political arts. This is the first, uh, the first work that actually uh, triggered the idea of this archive by Fernanda Laguna. She, used, she does a series of the Corazoncita and then she included the idea of the strike. And then Mariano, if you move one uh, forward, this is more traditional. From there, we got to this collective collaborative, collaborative anonymous uh, translating uh, work that goes to the music, goes to the street, then goes to exhibit to the archive, then goes back to the street and it's resignified every time. And it's um, every time I think it gets more power or disruption power. So I will end now, sorry for uh, not being able to go all the way, but I look forward to continuing our conversation. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sueli, Sayak, and Cecilia. Thanks a lot for sharing these thoughts for your really creative and beautiful interventions. And now I, I give it to Silvia and Rebecca that will coordinate the conversation. Thank you so much, Mariano. And, and thank you all so much for these brilliant and really mind expanding uh, talks. Um, so I think the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna ask a question, Rebecca will ask a question and then we will turn to the audience questions. Um, so I, I, I've like, I, I feel like my brain is exploding in the best possible way right now, but I'm just gonna read out um, what I've, uh, what I, um, a question that I prepared for for the three of you, and um, yeah, I just want to what, want to say what an what an honor this is. So, um, Cecilia, you speak about the new Unamenos movements hashtag Desire Moves Us, and you write um, our political discourse translates mourning and anger into struggle and into the creation of something different by injecting desire into political language. Close quote and. Um, and Suli, um, you consider that every politics, both macro and micro, has a specific politics of desire um, that comes with it. And so I'm wondering how, um, in all of your thinking, how is desire gendered, racialized, and rhythmed by difference in varying modes? And how do these differences and the processes they incur inform desire as a force of revolt? Um, so what kinds of multi multiplicity does desire hold? And if every regime of knowledge has its own politics of desire, including the episteme of violence proper to gore capitalism, to think with you, Sayak, how can desire um, in this more liberatory and micropolitical key be activated in the face of overwhelming um, and individuated desires to the contrary? Um, and I also wanted to uh, wanted to kind of bring up the theme of rhythm that I think. Um, uh, was was very much present in in your talks and Suli you spoke about the the need for life to recover its rhythm and perhaps we can also connect rhythm to uh, your notion of danceability Sayak um, as a form of resistance so um, thank you so much I was thinking I would ask a question again, but I think it makes most sense if you wanted to take on Sylvia, I think has offered us a lot to think yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe they reply to this and then you ask your yeah. question, right? That sounds great. Thank you all for the wonderful talk. No, empiezan ustedes, mejor si empiezan ustedes porque para que se conecte con lo que preguntó, ¿no? Yo creo que está bien. Me encanta escucharlas. Gracias. Entonces, so I, I, there are so many things, no? This, this, 
Sylvia's question is very, very nice. And also Cecilia Sarek brought so many incredible intuitions and, and no? Uh, <clears throat> so I think that the more, more what is more, more, more important to, to, to use this time to say is um, when I was presenting my first uh, word, um, I, 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 I didn't talk about what Sayak and Cecilia brought in a very brilliant, incredible, rich, uh, exploding <laughs> way, no? Um, because I talk on micropolitics, but I didn't talk about micropolitical revolution or micropolitical insurrection, no? And <clears throat> uh, I will take some, some words that you brought, some phrase, some idea that you brought and, and in Sylvia, the same eh, with your think about on rhythm and desire and, and disability now eh, and we you retake things that was circulating. <clears throat> as as uh, uh, Cecilia said uh, that we are living an, an emancipation of the potency of creation, no? And I will think I will take this to 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 develop what I want to present now, what I want to share. Um, <clears throat> as I said, uh, each regime, each, each uh, cultural system, each, each economical system, et cetera, et cetera, correspond always to a, a kind of unconscious regime, no? which is res responsible for the production of a kind of subjectivity, a kind of relation to the otherness of the world, not only to the human other, no? Um, <clears throat> a kind of answer, and this is very important, a kind of answer each time when life uh, grita, uh, scream, uh, huh? mm -hmm. screams, uh, I can breathe, I lose my rhythm. My, my movement is, inter my flux, flux is interrupted. I can breathe. And the answer in human being, because all the elements of biosphere, they listen, those screaming, those I can breathe, and they, they, <clears throat> they, they unleash a process of creation and transfiguration in human beings specifically, because each component of the biosphere has its specificity and the, there is no hierarchy, of course, no? In our way, <clears throat> it's desire that we respond, no? Okay. Um, so, in the left tradition, we are all left people, it's the least that we can be, I, I repeat this insistently, is the least first thing is to be aware <laughs> on injustice, inequality, that is, this is the minimal, minimal, no? <laughs> so, but in our tradition, we were always, um, uh, 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 fight only in the macro political level, which is the level of the distribution of the place of each one, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the level of the of rights of access to rights, and even to rights to the right to exist. Okay, so to be aware that uh, there must be another distribution of rights, <laughs> it's the minimal, and always. And why in the left history, we just uh, intervene in this um, sphere? Because we, white, left, fantastic people, left people, no? We are under the same unconscious regime. In our subjectivity, we, we are cutted. We are cutted from our experience as living being. So we don't have any possibility to participate to this collective construction, collective, not only human collective, no? But the common, no? But common in this way, no? This, this collective work of all the biosphere in order to restore rhythm each time it's it is loose, no? Um, we don't have any possibility in our subjectivity to deal with that because we are just totally ignorant on that. 
And this ignorance is not a, 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 a small thing because it's, it is, um, um, I said when I, I talked the, the, my first presentation, no? I said the factory no? of the colonial racial is a capitalist unconscious regime. I said that the, the fuel, fuel, no? the fuel is life as potency of production of forms, uh, the life of all the components of the biosphere as potency of production of form. This is the essence of life. I said that the goal is to pimp in this unconscious regime, the goal is to pimp the potency for, for its own purpose, which is the products are accumulation of economical, political, and artistic capital, no? Okay, but what, uh, now, now I want just to put this into, into our, in, our, <laughs> in our conversation. Huh? Uh, what are, who, what is the gears of this machinery, of, of the machinery of this, this factory? One gear, fundamental gear, is exactly what I, which I just say, the obstruction to, of the access to the affect. By affect, I mean those effects of the environment in our body. Okay, this obstruction is the first uh, gear of this machinery, colonial, capitalistic, racializing machine. And the second one, which I didn't speak at the beginning, is that as I am totally, I have no access to that, the answer this I will give to this lack of rhythm, to this destabilization, will be uh, not to create something, but to choose one of those, uh, um, how would I say, it? Uh, one of those uh, proposals of, uh, we have uh, in our hand, one of those images of, for instance, now if I, if I am in this destabilization and I, I feel that as a woman, I'm not desirable, for instance, because I'm a little bit out of, space is a little bit strange no what i will what is i will answer my answer will be to to submit myself to over overcutting over codification no you said to be overcoded by the images and then what, what all this that the, uh, sayak brought fantastic with her idea of uh, digital psychopolitical regime i have uh, millions of images uh, that uh, general and homogenizing images that I can submit myself to those images and, and by my self-desire, I, I act in order to be overcoded in my experience, overcoded uh, by those general universal images, no? So, um, um, okay. So, uh, when and with this, my desire is reproducing all the time the same system. The system is reproduced through desire. No, Sylvia insists on desire. No, the system is reproduced because when you say desire, ah, desire, desire, so that desire, desire. Uh, Micropolitics is, is, is the combat between different polit politics of desire, no? And we are, but not some, somebody out of us, very bad, diabolic, make must uh, do, no. Our own desire, our own desire uh, functions like that in a reactive mode, no? So, so you can imagine if we don't, I, I was talking on the uh, the left. People of left, they are people, like everybody, under the same unconscious regime. So if we just combat in the macro political level, okay, we can make we can produce an incredible revolutionary moment with equality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But everything you will go back to the same place in a new style, and don't cry, baby. Don't cry, baby, because we didn't do, have done nothing, nothing, any work to change this uh, unconscious regime. So those examples that uh, Cecilia brought on feminism are fantastic. And she said, and very properly, I totally agree. And there's those Argentine feminists, they are incredible. 
because because Argentina is the most developed left thinking uh, and acting in Latin America. They are left European, very smart. They, and they have incredible story of macro political struggle, the best. Each country of Latin America is has br bring something the best, <laughs> particularly <laughs> as Paraguay, everybody talked Guarani, the indigenous language, everybody, 80% of the population. Those, those Argentinian, they are the most well-educated in left European tradition. They are incredible, very courageous. But when feminists began, the feminists, they could take all this fantastic left tradition and introduce micropolitical struggle. And they have a, such a capacity because they have such a smart experience in macro, macro political uh, combat that they can articulate the, they, they not, not only develop a micro political resistance, but they, can, they are very smart to articulate that with macro political actions, no? So I think it's a very, so when Cecilia said emancipation of the potency of creation, if the, 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 the goal, the goal of capitalism, no? The, I'm very, <laughs> excuse me. If the goal of capitalism is exactly to pimp, to pimp, life as potency of creation and to deviate the process of creation which would produce a transfiguration of reality in order to give back the rhythm no uh, no it is deviate as i said to to accumulate capital not only economic okay so if we don't emancipate i love too much uh, this this proposal this 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 way to say it is if you don't intervene in the in 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 the in the uh, life potency of creation, if you don't work and fight in order to take it out of pimping, to emancipate it, don't cry, baby, don't cry, and don't say that oh our macho father they make the revolution they are stupid they no they have done fantastic things, but. If we see, if we now we can be aware that it's not enough, that we must go through that, no, we must do it. Now. And it's incredible because emancipated potential of creation, you know, it, uh, I, uh, uh, the last thing I will say here, and uh, I give, I, I, I stop uh, talking, but what are the operators of this overcoding in our culture? Because Every time desire uh, moves, it is what it produces always overcode. No, what are the operators of the overcoding? First of all, the concept of gender that overcode the multiplicity of process, they, uh, not not only multiple but variable to the life process of of re reconfiguring our body now in order with what what is happening in the ecosystem no the 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 concept of gender is a, is a way of overcoding this and impeding this <clears throat> impeding impedindo impeding the, uh, interrupting this process of creation of another way another body another way another way no the other concept that overcoat, and this is the perhaps the worst, the most sinister invention of capitalism, colonial <laughs> system, is the, the concept of race that was invented in our culture, no? Because the concept of race uh, organize, organize our perception of human being, separating groups. Uh, putting, making a hierarchy, and the top of this hierarchy is the white man, heteronormative millionaire, blah, 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 European, okay, anthropophalo, ego, logocentric, uh, uh, all, all the shit, okay? <laughs> and all the other groups, their value, the value of our, uh, their existence is measured uh, 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 using the similar, the 
the proximity or not proximity with this overcoding maximum model no, of human being, okay? And, and in 19th century, as we know, because the, the, the concept of race was invented in 16th century with colonization and slavery, okay? In 19th century, this bullshit that uh, positive uh, science, no? They, have, they gave a fraudulent, fraudulent, you say in English, mm -hmm. fraudulent certificate of scientificity of those differences because it is biological. And we are totally structured with those overcoding concepts. They are not ideology that I, oh, I can learn another ideology. It's superstructure. It's just, it's ideas, bad ideas. We are structured like that. It's like, you know, if you, if you remember the uh, long plane, they have those, those sulcos. Como se dice sulcos? Cecilia? Uh, Les sulcos de donde pasa la aguja del disco. I think it's rat, maybe. R-U-T. In a, okay. in a, in a binial. In the, yeah, the, the, the bruise, bruise. trenches. <laughs> Huh? Como? In a in a disco, it's a uh, grooves like the grooves. Grooves, right grooves the grooves, <laughs> and the, how you say the aguja? Needle. Needle. The needle always runs in those grooves, no? And they all, always the same melody. So our brain, and it's not a metaphor. Please, I hate metaphors. <laughs> our brain is totally escaped with those runs. Run? I don't know the name. <laughs> Run. Okay. And the needle of desire circulate in the same circuits. So it's not just oh ideology, my, but now I, I went to New York University and I know that's ideology. So I, have you changed my mind? No, we are structured like that. And if we are we don't make a, a work of emancipation of potency of, of, of life as potency of creation, everything go back to the same place with new style. And this actual style is one of the worst style they invented. Okay, but I, I will stop here. I, I, on art also, I, I would like to say something. When Cecilia said, uh, is like, um, it, there are, um, one second, um, political aesthetical artifacts which go much beyond art. Art also was something that was invented in this context because art was a kind of human activity invented in this context, the only one where it was authorized to create from those effects of the ecosystem in our body. So the, fa the fact that now the uh, huge collective production of political statistical artifact means, means, means it's much more than fighting in art world against this pimping, horrible financial pimping in art world, or, or just, oh, it's nice also to present art to poor, poor people, not only museum. No, it's the potency of creation that is, that, that, that collectively, uh, we are taking in hands and not, uh, and, and we, are, we don't, it, there is no interest to, uh, to maintain it in a concentro, como fala campo de concentração, concentration camp, which uh, is called art world, okay? So, bom, I will, I will stop here, but you excite me so much that you have <laughs> I don't know if Ceci and Sayag want to add something or we move to the next question. Sayag, Cecilia. I want to hear more from uh, from you, from Sueli. It's uh, like uh, I'm just thinking about many things and it's, you know, open box all the time going up uh, something. But uh, I don't know if Cecilia has something to to uh, add, or uh, because I I I kind of uh, thinking about many things and and uh, well, but uh, it wasn't the question. But I I just I am putting nothing but Peluso because uh, it's really 
uh, edgy uh, to put it like uh, it's not that it's not uh, it's a counteroffensive, but in the same parts of the reproduction of science, kind of uh, colonial con uh, unconscious, has Sueli said. But also we are in too, and uh, and it's uh, I I try to put it there because it's like a maybe not a transformation, but a interferences. And in oh, and the thing that I love most of hair, it's uh, about. Uh, here and other communities because I it's like a yeah it's kind of kind of an alchemy product like a, many things happening together like a, many layers happening at the, the same time and it's a it's not just hair it's not my my, my idea it's not a personification of a, an icon overcoat has Sueli said it's about a she's not a, a like a, a totem or idol it's she is a the possibility of many layers happening in this in a really short time in a, with a visual devices with the art and playing with those stuff that we have uh, and well she have because she is a right now a famous artist but uh, also it's like uh, the way that the, the singularity is happening through the languages and mm -hmm. the weight of uh, over and over again the question about uh, of their copyright uh, copyright for using some kind of accents or using some kind of cultures. And I am really interested in this discussion because I am against the cultural appropriation, but also I don't have uh, the, I, I think that the terms of the discussion never are equal, like a cultural appropriation when the, uh, it happens in, uh, in the inside of communities, but it's not uh, something that some, some, something that someone tell someone uh, who is like uh, making crossover with a uh, Spanish, uh, like a uh, napkin call. N nobody said that it's a cultural appropriation and he's missing uh, uh, spelling and everything. And it's, uh, I'm really frustrated because my head can uh, think really fast in English and, and they have many things to say, but uh, it's a, uh, I like Nati Peluso because it's problematic and we all the time are like avoiding the feel or the, the sensation, the, the feeling of, uh, of trouble. Uh, we run away from trouble. We run away from uh, like the malestar, like the symptom, like the ill. And we are ill and we, are, we have to just uh, decolonize this unconscious, uh, as you said, Sueli, and it's a bodily uh, decolonization also, even if uh, she is like a star system right now, but I really interested uh, about uh, the reaction of people when uh, she is on uh, in, the, in the screen. So I just spent like a four hours like uh, searching for reactions in the, in the internet about her and many different languages, even if they don't understand what she's saying in Spanish and even knowing that she is not speaking in Spanish and not even Argentinian. She is making a pidgin, uh, like a contact language with other stuff. So I, I like it because of that, because it troubles me a lot. And I like to be in trouble all the time. And well, I'm not that happy person, but uh, but I have many things to think about it. And it, it's a, it's an opposition to this kind of, of um, polarization about that it's good or bad, not it's both or even neither, because uh, uh, this polarization of the live, live stream regime is that this kind of really simplistic architecture and really conservative architecture. So, um, and I'd like it because uh, uh, I think it's uh, acoustic, like uh, there is an pan acoustic that we ignore all the time because audiovisual is all around. It's like a, we are over and over again in a ocular centric uh, regime of, uh, of knowledge. And but here we can, you, you can, uh, you can remember that Google's uh, give some radio to anyone in Germany when the when they want to spread the word of the future, and uh, we we are all the time hearing. So it's uh, for me it's really interesting that that the territorialization of the hearing and something that it's not just visual. It's a uh, it's about other organs and up optics uh, stuff and all, all the things but uh it's interesting to 
have this conversation. And I will finish here because uh, I don't know, uh, uh, I can take more time, or, but, um, but even if you don't like it, you are intrigued about what is she saying? What I don't understand? Why is she interrupting my lineal uh, uh, mind uh, who, who is in time and space and he is Cartesian in intelli intelligi rationality at, the, at least. So she is like a, every, every time and not just in this uh, song, she's like a moving to in other place. It's in, and that it make up for to understand what is she saying, even if she's, she's not saying nothing. Right, and all the all the stuff that I like it is uh, in a really explicit uh, aesthetic that we live in, really pornographic, but uh, pornographic not in a moral sense. It's a more like an, an ethical sense, as has uh, Sueli said before. It's a it's a in this world, it's a really explicit world and really obscene. And um, I like obscene, and I like uh, porno, and I like. Uh, Body and but but she is making a really interesting intervention about this hyper visibility of a woman and uh, of this curse and when she start with how amazing it, you have amazing look when I'm in, in a all four <laughs> and it's like a, if you see it this this see it in a pornographic uh, video everything is fine but she if she's saying to you and you can picture it, you feel uncomfortable. And that that's why I like it because it's like a um, body, pleasure and desire and singularity doesn't have a copyright and can can be Nati Peluso or can be another uh, character, another person. But I right now it's like in this uh, example, it, she is the, um, I don't know how you said that like, uh, uh, yeah, the intersection between many things happening right now, and she is a um, like a interlocu ¿Cómo se dice interlocutor. How you said interlocutor in interlocutor, English? you can say. Yeah, it's a, I I'm speaking like a medieval uh, a person, who, but she's an interlocutor with the uh, the consumerism of life regime she is talking with other people we don't have to ignore uh the intergenerational uh dialogue because it's really interesting and and really we are shaping the the way we perceive the, the world but uh we have to uh be present because they are reshaping to be more <laughs> stupid and more uh, uh and more plain and we can do anything and we can we can do different and actually and i will say this and i will just uh close my my microphone it's um we are living in a different worlds all the time in the south and in the south and brazil when i was there i was like in shock it, it, very happy to be there but uh it's uh, in, in, in Argentina and other places and in, uh, in Puerto Rico. I love Puerto Rico. I want to live in Puerto Rico. And, but it's not like a tourism. It's like a ways of my singularity develops in there. And this space is really important. And right now the, the virtual space is all over the place. And it's the way we, really, we have conversation, we work and, and many things happening right there. So I will cross it. Uh, sorry, because I'm just, in Spanish, I'm so also so, you know, messy. Uh, but uh, well, thank you very much for for this invitation, and and we can just. I want to hear you. Thank you. I want to, to say only three comments, very short, because I want to listen, uh, uh, Cecilia. When I thought, when I thought, uh, also for me is to speak in English is very limited, but doesn't matter. This is what we have, but. Um, uh, when I, I spoke on art, it's not. It was not against art. Uh, for me, it's very. Uh, uh, it's very nice that people go goes on, also making a, a micropolitical insurrection in art world. For me, I I I I, I, I went out from the art world, and I, I'm I'm dealing with racism, because I found much more community to go on with those questions. That's all, but I'm so glad. I appreciate a lot the work you show, you have shown. 
it's very nice. And you said, and about what you said, uh, that how she convokes us, what, how she affects us, affects us, no? Uh, when, when the creation comes from the transpersonal, when it is a, 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 an effort to give a body expression to an affect and to make it there, a part of reality and circulate, it has the power to mobilize the possibility to go over this obstruction to the transpersonal. It, it, allows, it, it allows us to, to go, to, to make this, uh, to, 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 to open the way to our experience as, as living being, no? And, and so it doesn't matter what kind of language, what matters is what is pushing, what is pushing the creation through this language. And I just want to, to say one very quick thing uh, that is in my book, and I will always give you this example. For the Guarani people, the Guarani, they are living in Brazil, um, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay. Bon. Uh, for Guarani, the world, the term they use to say word, word, nye'e, means word soul is together you can you can't separate word word or language in a sense large and soul and soul is our condition of living being is the living in the subjectivity né? and for them for them all the diseases psychological physical social diseases they come from the separation between language or word and soul or the transpersonal or, or our condition as living responsible for the, the, what's going on in the whole ecosystem, no? With our own actions, the actions of our desire. So, the, so if, you, if we listen this fantastic uh, uh, invention of this term that can't separate soul and language, we can, and, and this separation is, the, is, is all the disease come from that. The main, main, main uh, gear <laughs> of, of the fabric of world of this uh, 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 colonial racialized, racializing capitalist regime is the separation between language and soul. And also, just to link when Cecilia said about what feminists are, are bringing, you know, uh, we must remember, and Silvia Federici worked that very nice, we must remember why the, the women in middle age has been qualified as witches and they are, uh, have been assassinated, burned. Because the function of those women was the social function was exactly to behave, act, say, express from in this process from the affect of the, the ecosystem in your in your body to language. They 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 their function is to care about that. So it's very nice that women recover what has been burned as witches because without this obstruction there is no capitalism no so no just that and also another thing i said that the gears of this overcoding are race gender and another one very important is oedipus the problem of of, of freud was because freud made an incredible work because he introduced Micropolitical resistance in, in Western uh, civilization. But he didn't realize that Oedipus is one of these uh, gears, those overcoding concepts or, or dynamics. It's not a human universal stuff. It's the neurosis that he was dealing with. Neurosis is the mode of subjectivation in our civilization moment. I, I stop here because. Cecilia, please, and all, all the people that are here with us. 
Well, just to add uh, and try to go back to the question and to Suelis and Sayak's um, responses, um, well, I really like Nati Peluso, and, uh, but too. what is important here what is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have spent all the summer with our famous friends listening to Nati Peluso. Um, so, but the thing is, the construction, what, what calls my attention here is the, the construction of the feminist character also. And according to what Sayak has defined as the live stream regime, right? And, and, and the polarization it produces. It's like, oh, we love Nati Peluso or we hate Nati Peluso. Nati Peluso needs to burn in hell and everybody will lynch her on, on networks uh, or everybody will love her. And this is also the way in which desire is captured the most and, and transformed into commodity, into money for uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, all the, this. Uh, platform capitalism desire is not gendered i think it's not and so will correct me if i'm wrong or, or it's not racialized desire is a force of life of course it can be coded uh and and and, and expressed through racialization genderification etc cetera, etc cetera. but um what uh, worries me here is that the neoliberal common sense uh built through the networks and the live stream regime can transform itself into a feminist common sense. And then there's the good feminist, there's the bad feminist. And usually the good ones are the ones who want to lynch people, who want to escrachar, who want to uh, do, uh, I don't know, a form of uh, justice that I find very problematic. And uh, the ones who insist in the character of the uh, victimization as the, uh, as the way to enter the political scene. We have seen uh, so many communities entering the debate by, by victimizing themselves and accusing other comrades of ignoring them or uh, victimization accusation. And this is uh, very much uh, something we have learned through the networks and, and while our desire was captured and transformed into uh, commodities. Um, so yes, I would end uh, with that. Okay, uh, I mean, we are running out of time, which is uh, <laughs> I the think usual. The usual when you invite people like you three, basically. But I mean, I mean this is fantastic. Maybe, I mean, because uh, Rebecca has to leave, but she had another question. So maybe you can pose your question before leaving, and then we can stay a little bit. Because anyway, this is going to be. Uh, it's been recorded, as we said before. So the question will be there in the ether, in the internet. <laughs> I was really, I was actually just thinking because there are a ton of audience questions that maybe I would point towards them also because there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions. Okay. Sounds okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Aranza, you had your hand raised for a long time. I don't know if you still want to ask a question if you're there. Aranza Peralta. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, I'm also from Mexico, so I would like to address my question to uh, Sayak in Spanish, if it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Eh, bueno, Sayak, primero que nada decirte que soy tu super admira admiradora. Y bueno, eh, es, acabé enamorada de capitalismo gore y creo que 10 años después sigue siendo más actual que nunca. Y bueno, estamos insertas en este live stream regime, regime que nos hace a todas y a todos ser parte de este, somos ya como un producto de esto mismo, ¿no? Y por lo tanto nuestras resistencias nacen y crecen desde ahí. Entonces mi pregunta es, ¿hay alguna forma de resistir a este régimen capitalista, capitalista colonialista, heteropatriarcal, desde una periferia que no esté inserta en este régimen que ya ha conquistado y dominado hasta nuestro inconsciente? Uh, ok, voy a, voy a, no sé, ¿quieres que te... te, te uh, I don't, no sé, estoy como perdida en, el, en la frontera del lenguaje. I will try to uh, respond in, in English, but... Uh, um, she was a uh, question about this. There is any possibility to uh, 
resist uh, this live stream regime. It's, it is connected with the un colonial unconscious uh, regime. And uh, actually, yes, well, it's yes and, and it's, it's well, yes and no. We are participating all the time actively, even if we don't, even if we just have a phone, right? But also uh, uh, the, the idea in the conversation with uh, Sueli Rolnik, it's, uh, it's about, uh, well, as you know, I love her work and it's all over the place in capitalism work as a reference to Sueli, well, Watari and Sueli. Yeah, but um, it's like, uh, we, I don't know, maybe it's a stupid uh, answer that I will do it. I, I like to do that because I, I don't have any answer at all. And I just have, uh, well, many questions all the time and it changes and go back and then, but uh, I, I think it's both. Uh, we are participating even if we don't are active in, in, the, in the social media, no? we have those, uh, this stuff, but also, uh, there is many people who has now uh, this device. And there is a lot of people who is out of the live stream regime interaction. But we, one of the, of the success of this regime, the capitalistic and phallologocentric and everything, uh, it's about that to make us think that it's, it's, it's all around. It's like a nothing is happening without. And it's not. Because has Sueli said and has uh, has Cecilia said, uh, and I don't like want to use uh, the word nature, but I have to because I don't have any other word right now. But uh, it's a. Uh, uh, me gustaría decirte una cosa en español porque desde una poeta de una. Sí, está ya, mira, para todas, como que la parte oficial terminó a las siete, así que este after hours puede ser en español, no hay problema. Ok, uh, tengo una respuesta bonita que me gustaba mucho cuando yo decía, me pregunto esto también, y Angélica Lidl, que es una, una dramaturga, poeta, me gusta mucho como dramaturga, como poeta no tanto, pero... Uh, yo no mucho que... también, yo también. Super, me encanta, pero no me gustaría ser ella. Está todo el tiempo sufriendo. Me duele mucho leerla, eh, pero me gusta mucho. Y la cuestión es que ella dice, cuando habla de, dice, mira las nubes, mira la, la lluvia, dice, toda esa maravilla os ignora. O sea, las nubes no te necesitan para llover. Nada de este mundo nos necesita a nosotros para seguir. La cuestión es cómo nosotros, porque nosotros sí necesitamos ese mundo, bueno, la naturaleza, cómo nosotros vamos a crear no resistencia, sino transformaciones y cómo sí estamos creando transformaciones todo el tiempo. La cuestión es la territorialización de esas transformaciones. Es como si construyéramos algo y luego el asedio lo va llevando y se lo va comiendo, pero también a partir de esa, de esa hibridación a veces no consensuada surgen otras formas de fuga, porque si no, si estuviéramos completamente acaparados, no le serviríamos al régimen capitalista, no estaríamos produciendo nada porque habrían capturado nuestro deseo de tal manera que ya no seríamos útiles y podríamos desaparecer para ese régimen y también ese régimen colapsaría. Sin embargo, esta no es la realidad de, todo el, de toda la gente, ¿no? Y entonces, eh, como hay un imperativo colonial productivista que se está afianzando ahora en las redes, y que viene de este inconsciente colonial capitalístico del que habla Sueli Rolnik, o de esa arquitectura de la psique colonial, y que antes de la colonia hubo otras colonizaciones, ¿no? Nuestra colonia es lo que estamos hablando un poco para tener una memoria histórica. Resistimos en muchos sentidos, y creo que en, en ese sentido las, las personas que están más vinculadas a movimientos y a colectividades están resistiendo de una manera quizá no macropolítica, pero sí afectiva y creando comunidades de sentido que le oculten su significado a ese régimen life y al capitalismo, que no están sirviendo para ser explotadas, aunque están siendo explotadas a pesar de ellas mismas. Eso es lo que yo podría decirte ahora mismo, pero lo dejo acá porque no quiero seguir como acaparando la palabra. Me, me gusta mucho hablar, como ya saben. Y además me tomé como tres litros de café. Entonces, <risa> <risa> gracias. Eh, yo quería solo añadir una cosa, como la, en, la, en la respuesta que tú traiste hasta allá, que me gustó y me... Me gusta que esta pregunta, pregunta ha llegado, ¿no? Es que la vida, la vida, la vi, así como dice que las nubes, ¿no? Lembrando a Linda, que las nubes no dependen de nosotros para estar. La vida, la vida, su respuesta es siempre la perseveración, la, la continuación. 
y la vida encuentra sus caminos, ¿no? Lo que impide en este régimen, de, en este régimen político es el humano, somos nosotros que le impide, no es la vida que se impide a sí misma. Entonces, la emancipación, como decía eh, Cecilia, emancipación, la potencia de creación, es justamente ponerse a la altura de la vida y no contra la vida. Y eso no quiere decir solo concretamente, quiere decir estar a la altura del trabajo de creación a cada vez que la vida suena su alarme y nos pide una transformación para que vuelva a respirar. Porque nosotros, como parte de eso que llamamos la naturaleza, deberíamos ser como los árboles y las cucarachas, pero somos, somos muy infer estamos muy, infer muy enfermos en esta situación. Pero la vida, sí, la respuesta que te doy es que la vida, chica, la única cosa que puedes confiar es en la vida. La vida sigue. Si no, si no, lo, si no lo impedimos, la vida sigue. Entonces, el trabajo está en nuestra mano. Y el trabajo es posible. Como siempre ha sido en toda la historia humana. En momentos catastróficos como ese. Nunca paró. Eh, había una pregunta de Sorsina. No sé si Sorsina Vidiela la querés hacer en vivo. Eh, o querés que la leamos. ¿Qué preferís? Ah, en vivo, Georgina, quiero ver tu rostro. ¿Quieres que la lea? Ella me pide que la lea. Bueno, espera que la, la busco porque hay miles de preguntas. Eh, espera un momento que, que, que la busco por ahí. Eh, y ya creo que será de las últimas porque realmente nos hemos pasado, pero bueno, es el entusiasmo. No, eso es, es, es Latinoamérica. Cuando es, es necesario, uno lo hace, independientemente de las reglas. Y lo que se cambia las reglas, porque es necesario. Es, 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 es de nuevo la vida. Será esto una, una de las formas de la vida. Es, es una pregunta para Sayak, de nuevo. Y dice, ¿este conjunto de circunstancias serán las que permiten que los discursos transodiantes Radfem se propaguen y generen muchos likes en redes sociales sin ser ellas la personificación de un macho fascista como Bolsonaro? ¿Cómo puede ser que ello además esté sirviendo a AMLO para acusar a las feministas de estar en conspiración con la derecha? Es muy interesante el planteamiento, también porque hay personas creando arte e intervenciones digitales para resistir el live stream regime. Es sensacional escucharte, felicidades también por el esfuerzo, el esfuerzo de hacerlo en otra lengua. Que eso de paso les agradezco a todas el esfuerzo de haber hablado en inglés, ¿no? Okay. Bueno, hay una serie de cuestiones que sí, que por supuesto eh, permiten que estos discursos transodiantes, también tenemos que entender una cosa que tiene que ver con la arquitectura material de las redes, o sea, la infraestructura que posibilita que nosotros mandemos los mensajitos y bajemos al computador y la incompatibilidad de ciertos dispositivos con otras cosas, o sea, yo estoy metida en esa parte como de la materialidad porque en un mundo que parece tan desmaterializado que es el mundo del, del lenguaje de la comunicación eh, en redes, o, o sea, el régimen live que suplanta la realidad, que hace todas estas cosas, necesita cada vez más del mundo material o del mundo del capitalismo gore y, sigue, y cada vez es más gore y por eso estoy investigando las dos cosas porque el capitalismo gore me llevó al re, régimen live y porque también mi propia vivencia, pero la cuestión es que eh, mientras, eh, mientras pensamos en, en, en la parte como simbólica, y eso, eso es importante, pero también la parte material, sí, las condiciones de expropiación y de, y de saqueo material del régimen life sobre territorios como Venezuela, como México, como todo, todos los continentes excoloniales, entre comillas, eh, siguen estando ahí. Pensamos en el régimen life porque es mucho más cosmético, es más divertido, eh, es un escape también pero no estamos viendo todo el asedio material que hay, la minería a cielo abierto, la contaminación de los ríos, eh, el tráfico de personas eh, y de animales para poder crear la materialidad de estas redes, ¿no? Y eso me parece que es súper importante, y ya sé que preguntaste sobre las feministas radicales. Primero, una cosa que me parece importantísima que tenemos que volver a poner en el plató y en la discusión y en todo es el la captura del del, de los conceptos fraguados desde las resistencias, desde los movimientos sociales de izquierda, desde los feminismos, desde los feministas, feminismos antirracistas, desde los movimientos opositivos a este asedio, que están siendo capturados por el lobby 
neoliberal para vaciarlos de sentido y que signifiquen lo que ellos quieren que signifique. En este sentido voy a decir lo que, lo que dice Sueli con la vida, que nunca se vaya a entender que Sueli está diciendo que la vida es igual al pañuelo azul, que eso es lo que han hecho las derechas, volvernos un lugar de inteligibilidad de la vida de derechas, ¿no? O sea, si estamos defendiendo, las feministas que defendemos la vida no estamos, no sé si alguna, pero no estamos en contra del aborto, estamos a favor de la autonomía corporal, ¿no? Y, en, y no estamos en contra del aborto. Entonces, a eso voy a, a, aquí a decir que el RATFEM es un concepto contextualizado de manera errónea en el momento contemporáneo, porque eran los años 70 cuando las feministas radicales lesbianas de Estados Unidos hablaron de una ruptura a un movimiento cis heteronormativo, bueno, en ese momento no se llamaba así, pero era un movimiento lesbófobo directamente, ¿no? Este, donde las lesbianas no cabíamos, y ellas dijeron, bueno, nos vamos a radicalizar, y radicalizarse no es volverse extremista, es ir a la raíz de la cuestión, ¿no? Radical viene de ir a la raíz, y otra vez volvemos a la tierra, otra vez volvemos a la vida, otra vez volvemos al ritmo, otra vez volvemos a esta cuestión, pero ir a la raíz de la cuestión, eso era lo que ellas querían, y la cuestión era el patriarcado y el patriarcado cis heterosexual, diríamos en términos contemporáneos, ¿no? Entonces, las feministas que odian a las personas trans no son feministas radicales, son fe personas que odian a las personas trans. Entonces, también no dejar que ese tipo de, de usos, eh, pues digamos, nocivos y que borran y ocultan una memoria histórica de una resistencia real y de una alianza política entre lesbianas y minorías sexuales y raciales en un contexto altamente violento contra esas comunidades en los años 70, donde ser lesbiana, igual que ahora, sigue siendo motivo de que te violen para corregirte, que te metan en centros de internamiento, que te quieran casar a fuerza, que hagan que tengas hijos, que todas estas cosas, no solamente las lesbianas, pero en este sentido eh, creo que la carta de, de volver a poner la, en la etiqueta de Ratfem a una, dejarles que se queden con nuestra lucha y nuestra memoria histórica es, es algo que no tenemos que hacer. O sea, eso no significa lo que ellas quieren que signifique. Eso significa lo que significa políticamente y su memoria histórica, ¿no? no y porque nos han quitado también todos los conceptos, todo lo bueno, lo, lo bello y lo justo, entre comillas, aunque esa triada la, la odio por colonial, se la quedó la vida de derecha, ¿no? No podemos tener una buena vida si no somos de derecha. La gente que está en el margen tiene que vivir siempre mal, ¿no? Porque, porque, no, porque no apoya esos valores conservadores con los que se quedó eh, conceptualmente la, la, la vida de derecha. En fin, todo esto lo estoy diciendo porque las personas transodiantes que están eh, en una arquitectura quizá muy cómoda, eh, lo, que está, lo que nos está diciendo el feminismo que es transodiante, no, no le voy a decir ratfem, eh, es algo que ya decía Simón de Beauvoir en los años uh, 40, 70, en una de, las, de unas entrevistas de los años 70, decía, es que las mujeres conservadoras quieren una mayor parte del pastel, no quieren cambiar, tan, no quieren cambiar nada, ¿no? Y yo no tengo nada que ver con una persona, con una mujer conservadora, estoy más cerca de un migrante indocumentado en esta frontera de Tijuana que con una mujer que odia a otras personas por ser diferentes, ¿no? Y eso me parece importante. Creo que el feminismo, aunque no tiene propiedad y, y eso es importante, no puede reproducir o no debería reproducir un discurso que hace que a esas personas que ya están excluidas de la sociedad y tienen una muerte social, además les des legitimidad a la derecha para que los termine de matar, porque eso es lo que está pasando. O sea, si estamos diciendo que no caben en el feminismo, los estamos no solamente a orillando a la muerte social, sino a la muerte física. Nuestra forma de gobierno en Latinoamérica con respecto a la disidencia sexual y a la raza y a la clase es necropolítica y necroadministrativa. No es una cuestión de lujo, de enunciación. Se va la vida en ello directamente. Entonces, eh, y ya hice un montón de conexiones y tomé como media hora, lo lamento, pero Georgina, te agradezco mucho este, esto que dices y que AMLO esté haciendo esta tontería de decir que las feministas somos de derecha. ¿Sabrá fe? No, la derecha no, no es feminista, o sea, perdóneme, pero, pero lo que sí podemos decir es que la izquierda sí es machista, y él es una representación de eso, y ya, lo voy a cerrar ahí, gracias. Ok, bueno, no sé si alguien quiere decir algo más, nos pasamos un montón del tiempo. Bueno, yo quería bueno. hacer un, una pequeña, un pequeño comentario sobre esa última conversación, sí. es que el, el, que es, que el hecho eh, cuando se haya dice, ¿no? cuando dice haya, que eh, capturan lo que producimos y eso vuelve una nue un nuevo commodity, es porque, porque la engranaje esa es justamente 
capturar la potencia de creación que produce para transformarla en una norma sobre codificación. Por eso digo la lucha, por ejemplo, con la cuestión del género. No es apenas salir del binarismo, es destruir la sobrecodificación desde la idea de, de género, ¿no? Entonces, y otra cosita es que eh, justamente esta subjetividad, que tiene, este engranaje que nos obstruye el acceso a nuestra condición viviente, y la posibilidad de estar a la altura del afecto que está ahí que, y que nos pide una transformación, la, la solución que yo encuentro, que es la, esta fase personal del sujeto, para recobrar un equilibrio que es ilusorio, pero tiene que, ¿no? que reacomodarse, una de las salidas es justamente proyectar sobre el otro la causa del malestar. Y eso hace parte de este régimen inconsciente. Y eso ahora está hiper, súper intensificado. No solo en esa cosa eh, del propio feminismo, no soportando cualquier cosa que, 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 que distoe eh, mínimamente de la del personaje de la mujer burguesa, ¿no? pero, también, pero también el cancelamiento en las redes. Tiene esta origen, o, o, o una figura como Bolsonaro, que tiene el poder de movilización exactamente porque propone, eh, sin parar, una posibilidad de proyecto, de, de bode expiatorio, ¿no? como se dice, el, el chivo expiatorio, ¿no? de siempre estar encontrando en el otro la causa de tu malestar y con eso tú te reconfortas, te, re, te reacomodas y además como es un movimiento de masas, eso es el fascismo. Tú te sientes súper calentita en un útero, pero es un útero en lugar de haber el líquido amniótico del útero, lo que hay, no sé cómo se llama en español, este, este líquido que sale de, de camiones de basura, en portugués sorume, ¿no? porque es un líquido de muerte que interrumpe el proceso vital. ¿no? Bueno, muchas gracias. Sé si vos querés decir algo más o ya cerramos. No, no, una línea para cerrar, juntando sí. lo que está diciendo Sueli y, y Sayak, que es que bueno, necesitamos eh, eh, hacer una revolución al interior de la revolución permanentemente, ¿no? una revolución micropolítica al interior de la macropolítica, y eso es lo que le criticamos a la revolución cubana, eso es lo que le criticamos ¿no? a la izquierda macho, no con haber todo continuado... Respeto, con todo respeto, con todo respeto. Pero no basta. <ríe> Por eso, es, es nuestra responsabilidad eso ahora. Exactamente. Bueno, muchísimas gracias a las tres, a Sayaka, Cecilia, Solí, un lujo increíble, y bueno, ya ven, todavía tenemos 70 personas conectadas, eh, es que hay mucho entusiasmo. Gracias también Silvia por las preguntas y por estar acá conmigo acompañándome. Uh, y bueno, if there's anybody else still that speaks only English, thank you for being here and for being <laughs> so patient. Um, bueno, muchas, muchísimas gracias y hasta tenemos una próxima. We have a next event at the end of April of this same series of conversations. Ok. So, adiós. Thank muchas gracias. Thank you very much for, for everyone. It was, it was delicious this meeting. Thank you so much. Oh, no, so. Y ahora bailar, me quedo con ganas de bailar, tomar bailar. una foto con ustedes. El café, el café te dejo con ganas de bailar. Sí, a mí todo me da ganas de bailar, ¿eh? sin café también. Bueno, que la próxima sea en presencial. Sí. Ok, perfecto. En una discoteca. Exacto. Oh, bueno. Bueno. Wow, gracias de verdad para todas. Gracias. Un abrazo. Cuídense, gracias. gracias. Chao. Gracias. Chao.